Hi guys, hope we are all doing well. Welcome back to Affinity Racing and welcome to my predictions for the 2023 Formula One season. Now we finished up the winter testing and whilst it did throw up a few surprises, not least of all the Aston Martin seemingly finally having some pace there's always some questions around you know what fuel loads were they on race runs qualifying runs tire compounds all that sort of stuff so you can never really take for gospel anything that comes out of the uh, testing the winter testing but it's certainly a good standpoint at least when we have three full days so safe to say that red bull is looking pretty dominant mercedes have they picked up their pace have they fixed that car we're not too sure but we're going to jump into a few predictions for the season along with a full breakdown of where i think every driver on the grid will end up firstly though let's take a look at my guess for the most improved driver and that is going to be joe guan yu or guan yu joe now based on the fact that he had a kind of a season that was fairly up and down in the alfa romeo there was a few technical issues of course we had that uh, rather horrific crash at silverstone and given the fact that in testing the alfa romeo did look very very promising i'm going to have him as the most improved driver that said i wasn't expecting aston martin and uh, fernando alonso to be doing quite as well as it seems especially now that at the time i get around to recording this video we are into and have completed the first two practice sessions of uh, bahrain as well uh, and the aston martin of course looking rather good so maybe let's have a joint prediction here of joe guan yu and fernando alonso for most improved most improved team, no surprise there, I am going to actually have this as Aston Martin as it seems they are absolute light years away from where they were just last season. I was also hoping that maybe Mercedes could be up there as most improved as well, but given the fact that actually they were just off the pace of Red Bull and Ferrari, they did end up P3 or maybe it was P2 in the constructors, but overall they were always seeming to be the third quickest team. Aston Martin, however, seemed to have made vast, vast improvements, which is good to see. We've got to say that. It's good to see. My predictions then for the most exciting race, one of the races that I'm most looking forward to, and I think most of the drivers on the grid, and of course most of us as well, it probably is going to be Vegas, and it is because it's a brand new track, it's a circuit that the drivers uh, aren't going to know, I think it's still being designed or it's just finished being uh, designed and kind of put together and, and, and in plan. However, the one thing that I am going to say about that is I'm not a fan of street circuits personally, I much prefer an actual, uh, an, an actual track. Um, but it's going to be one that we, we can definitely look forward to. It's going to be something different. We're not going to know what to expect. Does that open things up in terms of qualifying and race results? Chances are it's probably going to be Red Bulls for the taking, but, uh, you know, or maybe it's, uh, maybe it's Aston Martin by that point, who knows? Um, but yeah, it's looking like that is going to be a phenomenal race. For me, however, as always, I'm looking forward to Spa. That's one of my absolute favourite, favourite uh, race weekends. Uh, and of course, Jeddah as well, mainly, of course, for the qualifying there. I recently did a YouTube Shorts video where we talked about the race weekends where the qualifying is actually more exciting than the race. Jeddah is most definitely one of those events along with Monaco. But yeah, Jeddah for sure, very, very much looking forward to. So before we get into the actual Drivers' Championship, I want to very quickly look at the actual Constructors' Championship. Um, I'm not going to go into this too much because uh, I think the driver predictions will actually paint a good enough picture of why we've ended up where we have. Uh, but I think this will be a pretty good overview to begin with. So let's jump into that. In at number 10, I do have Haas. Uh, I guess someone's got to be P10 in the Constructors. Unfortunately for the moment, I do think that is still going to be Haas. Although in the next few seasons, hopefully uh, with some further investments and kind of sponsors and all of the financial wars, I think once they manage to get out of that and get some funding uh, behind them or be a little bit more you know, stable and find some more stability uh, in their financials. I think they could be uh, hopefully improving and, and seeing them kind of climbing up the uh, climbing up the table. P9, we have Williams. Not too much more to say about that, really. Logan Sargent looking pretty, you know, comfortable and, and, and confident uh, in the Williams. Uh, Alex Albon, of course, leading that team. In at number eight, I have McLaren. Nothing too much more to say. We've already touched on, you know, the troubles that they've had in testing and all that sort of stuff. Which is why in P7, just in front of them, we have Alpha Tauri or Tori. Uh, P6, Alpha Romeo. They seem to be doing uh, pretty well, as we've said. P5, Aston Martin. I am having them just pipped ever so slightly by Alpine, although it would be difficult uh, and interesting to kind of judge that one as we go. In at number three, I do have Mercedes. Um, this is basically just taking the numbers from uh, from testing really it's going to be really difficult again it's going to be one of those where uh, you know it's kind of uh, progression throughout the season see who can develop their car and 
uh, fine tune as we go. In at number two, I do have Ferrari, and number one, I do have taken the constructors down as Red Bull. But this doesn't mean that uh, this is necessarily representative of the actual drivers' championship. I'm going to get into that, and I'm going to explain why. So, whilst we do have these teams in this order, I think it's going to make for a quite an interesting season, all in all. And let's look into why. So, in at number twenty, we do have Logan Sargent. Now, I had Haas. Uh, last in the constructors but I do find although while Sargent is looking fairly comfortable and all that sort of stuff he did have himself you know a fairly decent number of race runs see, uh, things were seemingly okay at Williams uh, both drivers did make it into the top 10 times as well all in all looking you know fairly promising but over the weekend I think they did get left behind by the other teams just managing to get a lot more testing a lot more running done um, as promising as Logan seems Someone has to finish last. Sadly, I have him there. In at number 19, I have Nico Hulkenberg. Now, there's not too much to say here because I've got both of the Haas drivers, P19 and 18. Realistically, Hulkenberg went 19th. K-Mag just in front of him purely because it's Hulkenberg's first season back. Although he did seem uh, to say that he was very comfortable. He'd been in the gym. His neck wasn't too sore after all of the practice sessions uh, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I think in their high speed runs, I think they'll be thinking that, you know, wishing that things were a little bit quicker. Knowing that they don't have the qualifying pace, they have to focus on race runs, has, has. they have to focus on getting to the end of the race, picking up a few positions, maybe being a bit clever on strategy in certain weekends, but certainly having to uh, rely on that race pace, that long run pace in order to, uh, you know, pick up any positions and have any real hope uh, of securing some points. Uh, and as I say, K-Mag in P8. 18. Alex Albon P17. Now talking to Formula One, Albon said that today is much more representative of what we're going to have for the full year. He went on to say that it was a bit of a wake up call and it's more than they expected. Uh, and it's all about fine tuning the car and getting it into that sweet spot when it comes to the races. In at 16, I have Oscar Piastri. Now, across the weekend, he did have himself a few moments. Nothing too much that we didn't see from other drivers as well, um, but nothing majorly exciting to uh, actually report from McLaren. Norris did get the fifth fastest lap on day one, um, but that seemed to be pretty much the highlight of their testing session, uh, I think. Um, but Piastri did actually say, we're probably somewhere in the mix of the midfield is my best guess at the moment. But of course, we don't know exactly where everyone's at in terms of fuel, engine modes and stuff like that. So we'll find out on Saturday next week where everyone really is. Uh, I think we're about where we expected, which I found that last bit quite interesting because it did seem like they were having a pretty poor weekend. So if that's where they expected to be, then I think that is a little bit worrying. Um, but McLaren's technical issues throughout the, uh, the winter testing has basically meant that they've done the fewest laps out of all the teams, I think it was. And as well, neither their high fuel or their low fuel actually seemed to be particularly great. So I think that was a, that was a real worry. Um, I did catch a few conversations um, you know, on on why that was off the top of my head, I can't I can't exactly remember, but I think it was just a multitude of issues. To be fair, um, but uh, the main one being they did report in the press that they were struggling with their drag efficiency of the car. And although it's not clear on how quickly they're going to be able to resolve this issue, I personally do hope that they can actually uh, turn this ship around. Uh, and to be honest with you, I probably mean that quite literally because at the minute the McLaren is actually driving like a bit of a boat. Sorry, it's just it's such a pretty bad ship. In at P15, I do have Lando Norris, so just in front of Oscar Piastri. In my opinion, I saw a few interviews with Lando. He did seem quite deflated, whether or not that was just, you know, due to a full day of testing, uh, or it is the fact that, uh, you know, McLaren are looking to uh, set themselves up for a rather disappointing season. Of course, the, the rumours have already started circulating, the questions have already started circulating on whether or not he should be looking at other teams, he should be trying to find himself some options elsewhere on the grid, you know, preferably up the grid. Um, but I would personally love to see Norris fighting for, for podiums and for race wins and, and be up there in the championship. And if, and if that can be in the McLaren, I would absolutely love to see that. Um, but you know, I would if that meant going to, to Red Bull, Ferrari, Mercedes, that would be a, a tremendous pair. And whether he's with Hamilton or replacing Hamilton when he, he retires, I think that would be a tremendous pair. And him and George Russell, um, very very interesting to to see. Um, but yeah, McLaren, McLaren just can't give him the car to to do that at the moment, which I think is a, a real shame. Um, but Norris himself said it's still going to be a long season. We know we have a lot of work to do, but the team has a good amount of energy and the right motivation. So I'm happy with all of that. But as I said, he sounded pretty pretty deflated and done in in that interview. So I think that was just a uh, keep it polite for the press uh, kind of answer. 
In at number 14, I have Yuki Tsunoda. Not a massive amount to say on this. I didn't really see too much for some reason of, uh, of Alpha Tauri throughout the throughout the weekend. Both drivers, I think, seemingly to be um, relatively comfortable, a bit of work to do um, and all that sort of stuff, but not a, not a massive amount seen by them. So yeah, P14, Yuki Tsunoda. In a P13, I have Zhou Guan Yu. Uh, he actually got P1 on day two, um, but they were unmarked prototype tyres, I have a note here. So I think they were expected or suspected to be the C3 compound. Um, and I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you, if that actually got confirmed. But either way, Alpha looking very, very good, very, very promising. Um, and it looks as if they're going to be able to, to fight for some fairly high positions quite consistently throughout the season in uh, in quite a lot of races. In a P12, I do have Lance Stroll with Aston Martin, but uh, keep your eyes peeled for where we see Fernando Alonso because it's maybe not where you would expect. So P12 for Stroll, again, not a massive amount to say other than Aston Martin themselves seeming to be, uh, to be pretty decent, but it was Alonso who was kind of putting in all of these uh, quick times that we've seen throughout testing. Um, so Lance Stroll, P12. We weren't sure if he was going to be racing the first weekend of the season, but he does seem to be back in the car and, and perfectly fine with all of that. So yeah, P12 for Lance Stroll, not a massive amount to say. Number 11, I have Nick De Vries. Now, he finished day two uh, down at P4, I have here. Um, and he himself actually said, we had a smooth, quite focused day. We were able to run through our program. It's obviously very early at heart to judge uh, how we're doing, but we focus on ourselves. And I think it was a good start. So I think Nick De Vries looking overall fairly happy. It was actually reported that he had a lot of complaints about the car, which gave the en engineers, quote, a wake-up call. Um, but I think that can actually only be seen as a positive thing as it gives the engineers and Alpha Tauri some some direction. Um, you know, it gives them a it gives them a clear idea on where they want to go. I think they weren't expecting that from a from a rookie, although he is the most experienced rookie uh, on the grid. Um, but uh, Anthony Davison predicted on Sky Sports coverage as well um, that uh, he's going to work the team very very hard based on 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 what he knows of Nick. Going to work the team very hard in their development process. So whilst we're not seeing too much of Alpha Tauri. Um, I do think it's going to be uh, quite interesting again to see if they do develop and whether Nick plays uh, plays a part in that. Number 10, Valtteri Bottas. So top half of the grid here. Um, it seemed like the weekend, you know, sort of overall for Alpha was, was running very, very smoothly. Um, he did get uh, stopped short with a gearbox failure, which was just kind of one of those things that you just sort of roll your eyes. You really don't want to see Alpha Romeo having those kind of issues they had a few it seemed as if it was joe last year um that had most of those kind of uh, failures and reliability issues can't really remember off the top of my head but i do recall you know some decent decent positions being up for grabs and alpha losing out to them due to reliability that said it is alpha romeo so i kind of i guess they're, they're holding true to to what they uh, what they stand for uh, as uh, as car manufacturers but they really can't afford these kind of issues um you know when they're wanting to be moving higher up the table you look at mercedes they didn't have a particularly quick car at least against ferrari and and, and red bull but they were always there and reliability just did not let them down i think they had one retirement out of the entire season um which even that came as a as a bit of a shock so alpha really need to work on that um and yeah Otherwise, pace and the car itself, when running fine, seems to be fine. So that's all good. P9, Pierre Gasly for Alpine. Now, I keep thinking that he's still in Alpha Tauri. I keep getting confused. It's going to take me a while, I think, to, um, to, to solidify him as being an Alpine driver. But even after his first day of testing, um, Gasly had said, based on my feeling, I felt comfortable. I could spot straight away what sort of strengths and weaknesses we got from the car, what sort of direction I want to take it in, in terms of car balance. It was very productive. So overall for Gasly, looking fairly positive. Uh, I think that's good news. Just in front of him, I do have P8 down for Esteban Ocon. Um, and as we talk about teams developing, one team that looks to be kind of peaking a little bit ahead of its competition, maybe, uh, you know, in the midfield, maybe, except for Aston Martin, uh, is Alpine. They seem to be doing pretty well. Um, what was I found quite interesting was they'd never really had many porpoising issues last year. A lot of the teams seem to have gotten on top of that. Um, and then in the early stages of the session, um, you know, maybe it's a slight directional change that um, Alpine have, have taken in their car setups. All of a sudden, they did have porpoising, something that they didn't really suffer from before. Um, and, and now they've kind of reintroduced that problem um, or introduced that problem to themselves. But I think they managed to dial it out across the weekend. So I think they're, I think they're all good there. Now, this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. In at P7, 
I have Fernando Alonso. So that A AMR, hard to say that, the AMR 22 seems to be suiting him really, really well. He's obviously ahead in terms of hours in the car um, versus uh, Lance Stroll, um, but I think we, I think a lot of us probably were expecting Alonso to be a lot quicker than Stroll. Let's be let's be perfectly honest. So um, I don't really know if that is is too much of a um, is too much of a reason for his for his extra pace. I'm not too sure, but um, you know the early sessions as well. I've got the, got that number down: 0 0.029 seconds off of Verstappen in the Red Bull. Absolutely tremendous. Um, and if that was anything to go by, um, you know, the somewhat unlikely thought of Fernando Alonso ever really fighting for podiums or championships again, all of a sudden is just this reality that nobody expected. And it all came from the development of the Aston Martin, which in it in and of itself, nobody expected. So P7 for Alonso. Let's hope we can see him fighting for a few podiums. I think we would all love, 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 love to see that this season. In at number six, we have Carlos Sainz. I'm going to try and get through this just a little bit quicker, but this is a tough one. I do predict that Charles will finish a fair way higher than Carlos, and I'm going to get onto that in a minute. But Fred Fazer has already said that, you know, when the when the time comes, he will favour drivers um, one way or the other if it is in Ferrari's best interest. And something for me just says that Charles is just going to get that that start. He's just going to hit the ground running, I think. It looks to be all fairly positive, although it did seem that in practice sessions again, winter testing, I think that uh, Carlos was actually was actually having the edge, so maybe I need to uh, rethink this. But I do think that it'll be a little bit like a, a Perez and, and Bottas situation where a certain point in the season comes and then it's just kind of like cover positions. You're 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 backing up. Um, you know you're kind of the 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 second driver basically and kind of follow our command. So I would hate to see that for Carlos, but um, I think that is possibly the way that it's that it's going to fall. You know Ferrari are desperate to. To get a championship drivers and constructors or one or the other but on a positive note carlos did seem to be very happy throughout testing um he said it feels like an evolution of last year it feels honestly very similar to drive and there hasn't been mega changes going on uh, in the car or in the concept so trying to improve the good pace that we had last year um, it did uh, however seem to have a lot more tyre degradation than a lot of cars which might be something to consider as well i think one thing that surprised us again with aston martin actually was that their tyre degradation actually seemed to just work in reverse. The more they drove the tyres, the quicker the car got, which uh, I think everybody needs to work out how on earth they are managing that. But Ferrari overall did seem to have quite high uh, tyre deg. In at number five then, things start to get interesting here. In at number five, we do have Sergio Perez. So I actually personally hope that he can draw out at least the fight for the, for the championship way, way later down the line. I think this season he's going to be a lot more keen to do so. I think he's going to be able to kind of stand up a little bit more to Red Bull, to Max, uh, kind of force his way into um, you know more challenging uh, strategies and things like that, or even just challenging the strategies that he gets that he does get given. Um, and of course, he did set the fastest lap overall of the winter testing, which can only be seen as a positive. Um, but as we as we've seen from last year, team orders is going to play a, a big big role. I think certainly once we hit a certain part in the championship um, and it's always going to be Max, it's always going to be Max that that favours regardless of who's where in the championship, it's always realistically going to be Max. So yeah, P5 for Perez, uh, P4 we have George Russell. Now, the W14 firstly uh, going back to black which I have to say looks absolutely epic. Um, apparently that's making a difference to weight two, which does beg the question why any of the cars on the grid uh, end up getting painted and have all these sponsors on and all the rest of it. Um, it begs the question why all of the cars just aren't black. But anyways, uh, I guess I'm not a Formula One technician, mechanic or, you know, anybody that holds anything close to a valuable opinion, which begs the question why you're even watching this video, I guess. But there we are. But yeah, I have George and P4. Um, now, similar to my predictions for constructors, I think it's safe to say that Mercedes, whilst, you know, they don't, at the moment, they don't seem to have the pace to match Ferrari or Red Bull, um, but they're absolute powerhouse machines. Prime example of, of, of reliability. They're going to be there just like plugging away on those those results, those P3s, those P4s, P5s, and they're just going to be there. And if anything does happen further up the field, they're going to be there to capitalise. I think that is going to be very much the story of Mercedes' uh, season. 
uh, whilst also kind of developing the car as much as they as much as they possibly can. So I think that's uh, that's that's George in P4 for me. Um, George did say I think we've uncovered some interesting things in the data that will hopefully find us some more lap time. I think he did have a, one or two of his sessions cut short as well, didn't he? P3, Lewis Hamilton. So begs a question on where I have the championship winners, but we're going to get onto that. P3, Lewis Hamilton. So um, I would absolutely love to see, I genuinely would love to see him get the 8th World Championship, but I just don't think this season's going to be it. I just don't think that... I don't think that's the story of Mercedes this season. Basically, I think um, they've got. A, I think they've got at least another year before they're, they're matching the the Red Bulls or de before they can develop themselves to catch up to Red Bull and, and Ferrari. Let's not forget they're going to have to work twice as fast in their development because Red Bull and Ferrari are still going to be progressing throughout the season as well. They're still going to be developing, getting quicker, setting up the car. Max has already said the car feels better everywhere, so it begs the question: Where can Red Bull improve? But I guarantee they will. Um, and yeah, they they I got down here actually as well. So Hamilton did manage second fa second fastest lap of the third day of testing, but yeah, it was still three tenths, three and a half tenths off the pace of the Red Bull. So you're second fastest, but you're still three and a half tenths off. Again, we can't take too much from from testing, but I thought that was quite I thought it was quite telling. I thought it was quite interesting. Um, and even Lewis said uh, we're not quite where we want to be, but it's a good platform to start from. But I guess for him, you know when you're used to championship winning cars and all the rest of it, P2, even if that's where you were, is not where you're going to want to be or not where you're going to uh, be hoping for. So I do hope that Mercedes can develop the car throughout the season quick enough to give Hamilton a chance in the championship. Whether or not that happens, different story. This is the interesting one. This is the, this is the one that we're all waiting for. We're going to have a bit of a drum roll, but in at P2, I actually have Max Verstappen. So we'll actually talk about Max in a second. But Charles, I have down as winning this championship. I just feel, I don't know why, but I feel that this is going to be Charles's year. I feel that this is going to be Ferrari's chance. And I think this is where they're going to favour Charles uh, You know, at, at a certain point in the season. Whenever that time comes, I do actually think that um, this is why I have Red Bull winning the championship. Because I think they're going to favour Charles so, so much, knowing how much they've let him down in the past, let's be fair. Um, I think they're going to they're gonna favour him so much um, that even to the detriment or to the sacrifice of the of the constructors potentially. So Max, the RB the RB19 just looking sensational. Literally, Max suggesting pretty much that the car could not be any better. I think when he was asked where is the car better, he literally just said everywhere, uh, and it was pretty perfect last year. You know, it was absolutely flawless last year. So absolutely unbelievable stuff. But for me, I don't know. I just feel like. I feel like this is Charles's year. That Charles is where my money's on, basically. Um, so that's who I'm expecting. I would love to see Lewis get it. Nothing against Max. I'm a, I'm a big Red Bull fan. I'm a big fan of all the drivers. Big fan of all the all the teams. Um, I'm a, I'm a neutral. I'm a neutral, which is why I'm staying strong with Charles. Uh, I will be uh, backing him because I'll have some money on him. I uh, I do think. But that is pretty much where I see the championship. Uh, of course, that's all going to go out the window uh, as soon as we hit race one. Um, and it's all going to be upside down, back to front, left to right. And then I'll do another one of these saying, actually, I think that Fernando Alonso is going to win the championship. Who knows? Um, but there we go. That is where we are at. I would love to see all of your predictions in the comments of this video. Well aware this has been quite a, quite a long one, but we've had quite a bit to talk about. I think it's been, I, think it's been uh, I would like to think, time well spent. Maybe it has been, maybe it hasn't. But there we go. If you've enjoyed this video, please do like, comment, share and subscribe. That goes a massive, massive way to support on such a, a small channel like this. But in the meantime, enjoy, firstly, the Formula 1 season, the Bahrain Grand Prix, which opens the season. And uh, I shall see you in the next video. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe for future videos, future episodes, and more content just like this. And while you're down there, make sure you check out our description for links to our merch store to get hold of awesome t-shirts just like this one. Any orders on the merch store goes a long, long way to supporting channels just like this. I also think the t-shirts look pretty cool, so make sure you grab what you can, and I shall see you in the next episode.